Hi, this is the session on uh, art uh, using dry colour, dry media, we often call it. And to begin with it, we're going to talk about a little recap on what you've done already. You were working with only black and white materials, that was black sugar paper, and we used also white cartridge paper. With that, we asked you to free play with the materials, and we gave you a range of items with which to do that. Free play is a chance to explore and experiment with materials. So you may have used a crayon quite heavily, that's a wax crayon. You may have tried for something much softer item, such as charcoal. You might be wondering why we chose to use only black and white at the outset. Well, our thinking is that we focus therefore mainly on shape and line, the chief art elements associated with the drawing strand of the curriculum. Because if we had introduced colour at the outset, it's possible that children get distracted by colour. So therefore we work with black and white as a kickoff. And we do have white materials to be used on black paper. Chalk is a great one. And remember, most of the media that we're talking about can be used um, on their side, at the point. Children will often dot in their work. And the reason for not setting a task, I guess, is so that children have an experimental time seeing what a material can do. And remember, lines can be created not just by drawing lines on, we can also create a line by cutting. And many of you will have experimented with this. We can continue with that line and we can begin to make drawings onto a blank sheet, drawings which are created using lines and maybe free shapes or geometrical shapes. Following on from the free exploration of materials, we probably have asked you to use, again, black and white materials, perhaps a pencil, to do what children like to do. They like to outline both natural and man-made objects. Really, the materials are the initial stimulus, and then after, after that exploration has happened, there's an opportunity then to begin what Frevel advised his children to do, looking at natural and man-made items, drawing around them perhaps. There's a quite a distinct difference in the types of lines that man-made or indeed natural items will produce for you. Some samples of those, that type of work is produced here, large sheets and small sheets, uh, rubbing and mixing the materials together, fingerprints, making large and smaller uh, motor movements and beginning to get uh, an opportunity to see what the materials will do and again the focus on line and shape. Now when we move to colour, when we begin working with dry media we don't surrender our black and white media. They stay with us but we begin to add in new dry media. None of these require the use of a sink. I do want to mention that with all work, whether it be black and white or indeed with colour, let's have so that children, it's a management technique, to have damp cloths nearby so that when the children are using chalky or dusty materials, they don't have to go to the bathroom in order to clean their hands. This is a handy method and you can also have a dry cloth. Let's Add our black and whites then to the new materials. One of the simplest ones that you'd be familiar with are colouring pencils. They're just the cousin to the standard Joe Soap pencil. They give us small, sharp lines with good, vibrant colour. Another type of uh, marker or dry media that you'd be familiar with are um, felt tip markers. Now they're available in a range, they have a nice advantage on the colouring pencils in that 
There's a range of sizes and colors so that you can get larger tips and different shaped tips on the felt tip markers. They're also very freely available in schools. A range of sizes and colours in both colouring pencils and uh, felt tip markers. A very common material available in schools is the wax crayon. Wax crayons, you probably remember them from primary school yourselves, but they have a shiny quality to them. And if I just work here on the paper a little bit, you can see they can give quite vibrant colour. Another good fact about wax crayons is that they're very cheap and they have a number of ways of being used. They can also, for example, take a texture from an item. And that's wax crayons. Let's look at these ones. Less available, more expensive. Oil pastels. These are beautiful materials. They're made with linseed oil, so they have a very, they cost that bit extra as a result. But they have a very rich uh, and sticky uh, material which uh, allows for scraping through um, and also light and heavy work. That's the oil pastel. We also have a big range of chalk pastels. We can think of pastel as meaning crayon now. The nice thing about chalk pastels is they also have vibrant colors. They also have a, a range of sizes. This is great for children so that when they're gripping, they can use it on its side. They can again dot with it. Uh, it has, like charcoal, a great potential for blending. So perhaps children can experiment with blends of colors and merging too. Now I'd like to talk about papers and using the materials on a variety of different paper types. So, one of the least appreciated papers but very useful is this one that I'm working on at the moment. This is quite a lightweight paper and as you can see it's off-white in colour. It's very cheap to buy, it's called newsprint. You find some of this in your pack. This is a great material for uh, working with, for example, uh, chalk materials because they can be rubbed into it. It's also good for sketching, charcoal work, very easy to work with. Not so good, of course, for something like wet material, but we're not using those today. The other way that you might find that children would get a little frustrated with this type of paper is if they were using sharp pencils, which could potentially, it's not happening now, but cut or rip the paper. So it has great potential for use in the art room with a variety of different uh, widths of dry media and types of dry media. The paper that you will also come into contact with, but perhaps it is the much more expensive version, is cartridge paper. Cartridge paper usually is available in a range of sizes. Depending on the school situation, uh, you may be limited in size, but we do have large sheets of cartridge available um, from our supplies, if you want to experiment with those. Cartridge paper has great potential, for example, working with small or narrow implements and again without and working here in a free play approach i'm going to take for example you might try two two together children like to do this and then to work now they will perhaps start begin to make representational attempts and that's no no problem 
But what we would like you to do initially is just explore what the material can do, how thick, how strong, how robust it is, and how it looks on the paper type. Also, try your other materials, your other dry media. See what happens, how does a wax crane work in that situation, or indeed uh, one of the oil pastels. Use a mix, find out what you like using. Try to push and pull it and see what its properties are. On its side, at the top, dotting it, heavy and light work. The same goes for the use of the chalks. Using them in a way where they might blend with another material. And again, you see the, the use of the damp cloth. So, your initial task will be perhaps trying out not only cartridge paper, but trying each of your selection, your kit, your art kit of dry media on many different types of paper. So we're putting cartridge and newsprint aside and we're just going to talk about a few others. Let's start with this one. The black you've already come into contact with and here are other versions of the same. This is called sugar paper. Usually the largest sheet of sugar paper you'll find is this. It's often used for backing. 